Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. It is the first day, first full day of the new headliners set to promotion. We learned a lot of stuff today. We're, we're going to talk about these new cards. We're going to talk about the SBCs that came today, the objective. It was an overall, again, very, very good day of content in FIFA Ultimate Team, in my opinion. We're also going to look at some possible investments based on what time you're watching this video, maybe and where some card prices are at, and talk about some uh, investing in cards on that first night into the second day of a promo. So we'll talk about that, kind of like a trading tip sort of thing that we'll go over today as well. As you can see right now, I'm on 75K. I do not have a lot of coins. I am currently trying to flip an icon and a few other cards. These are just kind of cards I have lazy listed or whatever. And then I got this Soul Campbell at 700K flat, trying to make, you know, it's not a ton of coins, but uh, it's a fresh one, so I figured I could take 750 and get a quick flip out of it. And I really want those coins because there's a couple investments that I want to make. And we'll talk about that in the second part of the video today. But um, let's take a look at the headliner set two squad that we got today. And I'm honestly, I'm honestly very, very happy with this, this squad. Of course, do I think it's as good as the previous squad? No, I, I said this multiple times last week. Headliner set one was just going to be better than headliner set two. But... From this squad, I see way more players that are just affordable and usable and a lot cheaper. You know, there a lot of these players, instead of being 400, 500K, which a lot of the first team was, most of these guys are 100,000 coins. Boom. We have three guys that are 100K. Madison's 190, uh, Illicit 63, 100K, 200K. You know, and then we have, of course, we have the few, the big names, right? We have a Werner at 468. We have a Royce at 1.8, a Bamiang, Sterling. Uh, and a Wijnaldum, who I think is really, really expensive, but it's Liverpool, and he's going to get upgraded. So uh, we did get a nice... I, I think the player selection today is really nice. I'm happy with it. Good cards, big names, and very, very possible upgrades. Again, they chose a lot of guys from the same teams, right? So we already had Salah. We had Liverpool guys. We have two Liverpool guys. Uh, we've got two Leicester dudes. We have two Manchester City guys with um, Sterling and right back Kyle Walker. Uh, we've got Thiago Silva and Neymar. We've got um, Delaney and Royce, both Dortmund in the same squad. So we got some duplicate, you know, teams, which is cool, right? Because we can follow both of those cards for the same set of four games for what these guys are going to have to be playing. So I think that's pretty solid. The team selection today, again, I'm going to rate this team selection at like, I'm going to say like an eight out of 10. Like that is, it's nothing like a wow, right? But you can expect a huge wow for a second part of a promo, right? The set two, it, as we've seen this year, has always been a little bit less than set one. So I'm happy with this, how, how this, the, the play, team and player selection was today. Now let's talk about SBCs. This SBC right here, again, what is it with EA and liking to give away cheap Prem English strikers as SBCs, right? Now we've had uh, Vardy Player of the Month SBC, which literally had almost identical requirements to this. It was an 83 rated squad with a team of the week, which is exactly what this is. One Premier League player as well. 80 chemistry, but whatever. You just chuck in some Prem players, get an 83 rated squad, and you have yourself a live upgradable item of Tammy Abraham, who is playing very, very well at this time in real life. Now, again, a lot of people told me today on Twitter, like, yo, why is this good t content to you? This card wouldn't make your starting 11. It doesn't have to make my starting 11. Oh, but there's already so many first owner Premier League cards that are better than this one. I understand that this card isn't the most insane card, but it's cool and it's very doable and it's a live item. At any time when you put a live item out like this, who's this guy's scoring goals, Chelsea could maybe get four in a row. Maybe. You guys will talk about that in the comments, I'm sure. But... This is just a good value SBC, a live item, an English Premier League striker, Chelsea player. Like, this is just good value. Thank you, EA, for SBCs like this. This is, we've got one of these almost every day, like a decent value SBC every day for this promo, which is honestly incredible. Uh, we also got a headliners challenge today for an untradable mega pack. So hopefully you guys got something good out of that. I haven't looked at the requirements for this, but I'm assuming it's nothing too crazy. Seven clubs. 85 chemistry. Okay, well, we'll figure it out. I'll probably do that at some point, but it's a mega pack for the club. That is a G freaking G. And then we did get a objective player today, and this is what a lot of people are talking about right here. A lot of people are talking about this objective right here. That is the Orsic 
objective. This guy has been going off this year. Uh, what team does he play for? I don't know what the team, Dynamo something, right? So this objective is awesome because this is a card that a lot of people have used in this year's FIFA. He's been like the choice of uh, a super sub choice for a lot of people this year. 96 pace with 90 shooting. It's an incredible card and it is live. And to do this, you need two squad battles matches on professional difficulty using only silver players. That's very easy, especially with these glitches that are going on in squad battles. Um, you guys can get that done pretty easily. Score eight goals in rivals using midfielders with a minimum four-star weak foot rating. So I'm sure we can find somebody that is a uh, midfielder with a four-star weak foot and get eight goals of them in rivals. That might be a little bit grindy. But then Creative Crosser, assist four goals using crosses and rivals. That shouldn't be too bad. And then score five using score using Croatian players in five separate rivals wins. So if you have any untradeable, um, untradeable Croatians, that might help you out a lot. I'm going to actually go check right now and see if I have any. Just a really, really quick check. Because this is an, this is an objective that I think I'm going to actually try to go and grind for. Um, I know that I don't grind for a lot of objectives, but this is probably an objective that I am going to uh, going to grind for. And I already forget what the freaking nation was. What is Orsic's nation again? He's a Croatia with a C. Why did I search S? Yes, but I think I'm going to be grinding this, uh, this uh, objective because it looks very good. It's a very popular card and a lot of people like how this guy plays in game and he, he you know he's just kind of like the popular guy this year boom i've got kramerich and manzukic so i think i am sorted right there they're untradeable they're untradeable is coach is a four-star weak foot oh i might be able to get two of these done at one time bro i have to score eight goals oh kovacic and oh we're gonna build a little croatian front three you know that's how it's gonna do it right there that's how we're gonna end up doing that objective see if i can maybe kind of get two done at once but anyway, the Orsage card does look very good. We'll take a peek at the in-game stats if you have not seen it. The 96 pace with a 94 acceleration and sprint speed at 96. Really solid shooting. Um, passing is really solid. 94 curve is interesting. And then his agility and balance is what really sells the card. He is 99 agility, 97 balance, high, high work rates, 85 stamina. And this is a live item, right? So if they can win four games in a row... If he can get himself another inform, this card would go to an 86, right? So if an 86 comes out, we're looking at probably plus one pace, plus two shooting, plus two or three passing, plus two or three dribbling. So like plus twos and threes all around again, except for pace. So that would be another big upgrade to a card like this. He's got the four star weak foot as well. But again, this is just this is just one of the hype cards this year in foot. So it's cool that we have a live item of a card like Orsic in this game so again tammy abraham sbc thumbs up orsic objective thumbs up you have to grind a little bit but it's going to be worth it right for that kind of card and again if you don't think it's worth it it's kind of like that adama Traore sbc right this is just one of those players in this year's game of fifa that just is like i keep comparing people to the lozano of fifa 18 he's just one of the op cool players that has kind of risen up out of nowhere this year we didn't even who, who would have thought at the beginning of fifa 20 that you were going to be playing for a headliner version, an 84 rated Orsic, whose base card in this game started off with a 79 rating. Who would have thought that this card would be at this point this year? That's the beauty of Ultimate Team, and that's why we have cool cards like this that we go after, right? It's kind of a cool, you know, collector's card if you like doing objectives. I would say definitely go for it. I think it's out for six more days, maybe? Because the season lasts for six more days, so we have about a week to do this. Uh, which is not too bad. This Predator kit, I don't know if this is new or not. And then Lunar New Year. And I want to talk about this a little bit really quickly because this Lunar New Year kit SBC or kit objective, um, Lunar New Year is today. It is the 26th. Wow, there's a ball. There's a Year of the Rat and a, a TIFO. Wow. I'm going to have to get that TIFO. That's kind of cool, man. But this uh, this year is the Year of the Rat and the actually January 25th, is Lunar New Year. So I would be on the lookout today on Saturday for some sort of content regarding Lunar New Year. In years past, they have done like half price packs and stuff. So we'll talk about that maybe a little bit at the end in regards to maybe some of our trading thoughts and some of our overnight investment type things that we are taking a peek at uh, today in this video as well. But I just want to let you guys know that Lunar New Year is today. And also, I, I mentioned this in a, uh, one of my other videos, but it is very, very possible that we will get Man of the Match items today in foot, all right? Man of the Match items on Saturday night 
Last year, we had Man of the Matches that came out on Saturday night this very week, this weekend, last year. So be careful and watch out for those if you do see them. A lot of times, EA doesn't tweet them out. So only the only info that we have that those cards are in the game is we see them like in the game or on the companion app. They'll have this little banner down here that says certain cards are in packs for however many days. Um, so yeah, watch out for Man of the Match items as well. But again, let's get into a few trading things because I think... There is a very, very profitable way to trade with these cards right now when you're watching this video. And I'm trying to get this video out as quick as I can so that I can explain this to you guys and we can talk about it. First things first, these headliner cards are only in packs for three more days, four more days basically. They go out of packs Tuesday at 6 p.m. UK, which is kind of something we talked about since the upgrade SBC was released last week and it ended um, it, it ends on Tuesday at 6 p.m. UK. I kind of figured that the second set of cards would be out for that time frame as well, and that is what they decided to do. So this is, again, these cards are technically going to be more rare than the first set because they have less days in packs, right? It's just like Road to the Final Set 2 compared to Road to the Final Set number 1. We'll still have lightning rounds on the weekend, and maybe since these cards are only in packs three days, they'll run lightning rounds on Sunday, which they didn't run lightning rounds on Sunday of last week for the first set. So we'll just have to see what happens with those. But one way that a lot of people like to trade with these cards for the very first night, I'm gonna check this price again really quick. Uh, the very first night that promo cards get in packs, a lot of people like to trade with these cards because uh, it. a lot of people want to use these cards, right? And what we've noticed in years past is that the brand new promo cards, the first night they kind of get low because people pack them and stuff like that. And their prices just kind of skitter down as people, they, they get packed and they're sold and stuff like that. And then on Saturday morning, we're talking morning UK time when you guys are going to be watching this video. Wow. Holy moly. Aubameyang is 925,000 coins. He was literally just a mil. He was literally just a mil. That is crazy. That is nuts. But... These cards get low overnight the first night and then they rise up into the morning on Saturday for the second day because people wake up, they want to play Weekend League, they want to try these new cards out. That is exactly what happens with these. So we're going to go over here to Flippin and take a look at some of these prices and take a look at some of these graphs. Raheem Sterling, I have one on my transfer list right now that I bought for 475,000 coins on bid just a few minutes ago. You can see he was 700k earlier today down to 480 Right now, he's holding at 480, so he's still kind of his cheapest. But this is the time of the night. You know, I'm, I'm watching this right now, or I'm recording this right now at like 2.48 a.m. or 1.48 a.m. UK time. That's when this video is being recorded. This is the time of night where these cards get really rare, and they are very, very investable for overnight flipping into the next morning. So I want to take you guys through how we figure out which cards we want to buy and which cards are good to be flipping, right? Now, the first thing comes to this is this is a pretty big balls, I guess you could say, investment. This is not a guaranteed investment because, you know, it all depends on how many people want these cards, if people want to use them and, you know, stuff like that, if people are comfortable paying the price. But these are new shiny cards. They're rare first day. They do not have a ton of supply. And you can tell that by just scrolling back and looking at the supply on these cards uh, that today I think should be a pretty good time to flip into the morning. And that's why I'm really interested in this at the moment. So which cards do we pick? Well, a lot of it depends on supply. It depends on supply and how rare these cards are. So I chose Sterling as one of the cards I wanted to look at today on this video as a good investment because Raheem Sterling, I bet this one gets bought. Okay, never mind. I thought that one would get bought right away because people might be investing in these. Looks like they're not investing too much just yet. But uh, you want to look at the supply and you want to look at the rarity in these cards and the ones that go up the most again as i was saying are the ones that people want to use and try out right sterling already has a left wing item so that, you know i don't think this is a new item that people just want to go and try out um, i just think it's an upgraded item that a lot of people would want to see uh, and this is another thing you want to look for right so i just bought sterling at 475 i think i can sell them in the morning probably a little over 500k maybe like 525 or 530 if i search 521,000 coins 531k he literally only has two pages of supply two pages of supply at 530k that is insane i'm probably gonna end up listing a little bit higher than 530 because overnight listings like this a lot of people again they wake up in the morning they want to try out these new cards they go out and they buy the cards 
and they they list them up, right? So that's what we kind of look at. We look at rarity. We look at we think and look at the card. Like, is this a card people are going to want to buy to try out? With this one, I think it's absolutely yes. And then also we look at the overnight listings. So right now, Raheem Sterling only has four overnight listings in total, and an overnight overnight listing is basically anything over like three to four hours um, from when uh, like you're going to be buying the card, right? So this, if you see a lot of overnight listings, that's probably means a lot of people have invested in this card already. I imagine there's going to be more overnight listings on Sterling because this is going to be somebody that a lot of people want to buy, but seeing that there's only four cards listed at four, uh, 540 K overnight, and there's a couple more at 540 that to me, and especially some of these at three hours are going to be gone by the time the UK wakes up, right? If it's almost 2 AM right now, we still have like four, five, six hours before the UK is actually going to be waking up and you see these stars, cards start to rebound the most, it's going to be then. So uh, only having a few listings right now really looks promising to me. And again, he's 480,000 coins. If we would sell at 540, what's the tax there? Just over 25,000 coins. So we'd be making really good money selling these cards at 540K. Um, and so there's just not a lot of them on the market. And that's again, where the rarity portion comes in. So that's why I like Sterling. Now, the big thing with these, the big thing on finding investments like this and, um, getting these investments to work is finding the right buy price and buying at the right time. Timing this stuff is super duper hard. But again, a lot of times these cars do get their lowest sometime between the midnight, uh, UK time and like three, four, five AM is when they usually hit their lowest. So it's just something that you have to be keen and you have to be looking at prices and you have to know where these players are at and then kind of just go from there. Let's look at Timo Werner. Timo Werner is 400. Wow. He was literally just 450 or 460. This guy was literally just 470, 465 K. He's back to 490. So this card looks pretty rare to me. How many cards are listed overnight at like 540 K? Wow. Again, another very, very rare card. Not many cards over 540. I would see this card probably going to 540 in the morning. Let's look at somebody on more of a budget, right? Since I don't have a, a ton of coins, let's say my soul, my soul Campbell sells. Who am I going to be looking at then? This guy might be somebody that I end up looking at right now. Mr. Kappa. Wow. He's 168. So he's gone up. He was just 160. Actually 155 is what Footbin says at the moment. So he has gone up a little bit. And this is something that you kind of realize when you're looking to invest in these cards as well, uh, is that they're, their demand, especially if they're really rare, all it takes is a little bit of demand and these guys go flying. So Tiago Silva is one that I was interested in at first, but he actually has a decent amount of supply, you know, and he's, he's kind of below a barrier too, right? He's right under a hundred thousand coins. I would imagine he goes back above hundred K in the morning, but if I, I don't want to buy this card unless I see it under 90, because I feel like even, even though he's a pretty cheap card and I could buy more of them with my lo low coin total. Uh, I still would make more profit if I bought somebody like Kappa at 160 if I could or something like that. So I don't know if you understand that, but that's kind of the gist of what we're going for with these cards. We're trying to find rare cards uh, that don't have as many listings based on their rating and, and, you know, and cards that people want to use as well. This is like the right back that you would probably want to use other than Semedo. He's a lot cheaper than Semedo. He's Spanish. He gets those links and he got a nice boost. 90 physical, high, high work rates. Uh, three star, three star. He's a righty. He's got the speed. He's got 99 stamina, 93 aggression. You slap probably a shadow on him because he needs the defending boost a little bit. And uh, this is a really sick card, right? A lot of people would probably want to try this card out. So that's another reason why you want to buy these cards to flip overnight. Taking a look at the squad one more time. What are some prices that I think would be viable? If you see these prices that they're at right now, I would stay away from Wijnaldum. And for Madison, both of those were extinct earlier today. Those prices, I you just it's a hard to figure out what that low price is and what those are really worth. I think Wijnaldum's overpriced. He's 87 rated, and he only has one stat over his card rating, 88, and the rest are around 80. So I think that card is an 87 rated. It should not be worth 600K, but it's Liverpool. And again, just like we saw with Salah, those players, Liverpool players, are hyped up a lot because they're almost guaranteed the upgrade. I like Kappa. Um, I kind of like Taglifico to be honest a little bit because I think he's slept on because people think, oh, he's got the SBC or he had the objective earlier on. So there's not as much demand for him, but this is getting pretty cheap for him. Um, Aubameyang, I'm a huge fan of like 925. That was a really great price. Sterling. I like Werner. I like, 
Um, and then I kind of like Digne too. Let's take a look at him. I haven't looked at this guy's supply that much. But let's take a look at Lucas Digne, 178K. So he's one that's kind of stayed a little bit lower than the others. Is he actually 178? He is actually 178K. Let's see. We need at least 200K. Let's try 210, see what the supply is here. Supply at 210. Okay, there's two pages. There's three at 200K. And then we have a lot of overnights here. Wow, look at this. We have a lot of overnights at 200,000 coins. A ton of overnights. Goodness gracious. That's, at least for right now, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go in on Digne because maybe you could get 200K for him. It's very possible. Um, but then you're only making 10K a card, right? And if we looked at that Kappa card, which I think could easily go up 20 or 30K, you might have some more room for profit in that card than you would in a Lucas Digne. So, you know, Lucas Digne might rise in the morning, but for a lot of these, especially on the coin amount that I am on right now, I am all about return on investment and figuring out which one is the best one to buy for me based on my coin amount, right? So if I see this guy back down at 160 again or under 160, that is a buy for me in my opinion based on my coin total again. And I really, really, really need to sell this Soul Campbell so I have another 700K. <laughs> Uh, to work with for throwing some money to these and it looks like I might have to list him. Wow. Is that one really listed at 739? 739 with a shadow, but it's not fresh. All right. So you know what? I'm going to drop mine down to 745 with the open bid at 739 and we'll see what happens with that. I'm honestly just looking to, I'll make a couple thousand coins on that, but not many, but I'm looking to get that card out so that I can invest in some of these other ones and make more return on my investment there. So that is my goal and my wish with that Soul Campbell right now. So again, watch these cards and how do these cards rise? I haven't talked about that enough. How do these cards rise back up in the morning? When do you need to sell? If you do find some deals on some of these cards like I am at the moment, you will want to sell them uh, before 6 p.m. UK, of course, because there's gonna have lightning rounds, but you, a lot of times you see that initial bounce, you know, eight to noon UK time. And it's a great time to get out then because they kind of reach their peak on that jump. And then as we get towards the middle of the day, people start selling them because they know the content is coming, right? A lot of things we've seen this year is people like to sell cards heading into the 6 p.m. content drop time just because they're scared of what's coming and they don't want to lose coins or whatever. For whatever reason, people like to panic sell heading into 6 p.m. UK. So I would say if you can get these cards out by like maybe 4 p.m. UK, you might be good uh, taking the money on some of those. Uh, and again, people are playing weekend league. That is the whole desire and whole reason for people wanting to buy these cards. They want to try them out. The new shiny items in foot, they want to try these cards out. So those are my tips for you guys. If you guys can find some deals, GG's, good luck finding some deals out there. Uh, and again, make sure you use those tips that I talked about. Look for rarity, look for the overnight listings and factor in the demand of the card as well when you're looking to flip some of these cards if you do want to try that it is risky again but if you want to give it a go you have my thumbs up these cards people want them people are willing to pay for them we saw that last week i think that's going to happen again this week so if you enjoyed this video smash a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new it's been nate the foot accountant catch you guys later peace out